In the previous video, we cover robust regression using the RENZEC algorithm. Um, we ended up with having two algorithms. One is linear regression, the other one is uh, robust regression. Uh, the issue though is that we don't know how to actually compare the other two and check and see which one is better. So in this lesson, I am going to go through and cover the um, method or the methodology that you use to actually compare uh, different models. So this is what we call the performance evaluation or regression model. Um, there is a set process that you do go through to actually uh, evaluate the model that you've done. Um, we haven't talked about uh, splitting your training data. Uh, this is pretty much the first time that we're actually doing it here. Typically what you do is that in, in to avoid data snooping, uh, what you do is that you set aside a portion of your data as the test set and uh, keeping the remaining 80% um, to actually build your model. So let's just say, um, let me just draw an example here. Let's take for example, you have um, a group of data. Okay, so one, two, three, four, Okay, and then you have one and all the way down, all the way down, and then likewise, all the way down. Okay, so what this trends uh, test uh, split does is that it takes, um, let me just use a different color, take this portion of the data. Okay, so this could be 80% and the remaining portion will be 30% sorry, 20%. Now, it could also be that you take a slightly different approach. You take 70% and that leaves the remaining portion 30%. So what's the point of this whole thing? You are using this portion, all right, to actually uh, train your model. Um, you don't want to use your uh, the whole data to actually train your model because um, if you use the whole lot and then test it using the same data, Basically, you're using tarnished data to actually test your model. You're always going to be have a perfect model because your 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 model has already seen the actual data itself. Hence, you actually have these what you call holdout set, and these are the holdout set that you use to actually test your model uh, because it hasn't seen that data. Now, some people um, advocate that you do uh, a slightly different approach. You take sixty percent, okay, to train. Uh, and then take another 20% uh, as the holdout set and then another 20% as your test set. Um, why do you want to do that? The model building is on this side. Now, the problem is if you actually uh, use this method, meaning 70, 30 or 80, 20, once you actually test your model on these, you cannot test it anymore uh, because you already allow your model to look at that data. So hence, you know, people advocate that you train it using 60% and then um, evaluate. This is the evaluate um, Shen data set. And you might actually go through a few iteration. Typically, you do most of your training here. And then you ended up with, let's just say, three models. You test it using that, test all three. And then whatever's left, the final one that you select, you run your test data with it. So, no, nope, we're not going to save that. All right. Okay, we were here. So this is really the train set uh, test split that is uh, provided by PsychicLearn. It's under model selection. And we are going to use the LSTAT, okay, as our predictor, okay, and the median value as our dependent variable. And then we are training uh, with 80% of the data and 20% uh, being our uh, test data. And basically this train test split, which is the library that's imported from scikit-learn, will split the data into 80-20. All right, the 80% will be in your train data uh, under X and Y, and the remaining 20% will be in your test data. Um, we will instantiate our linear regression model and we fit it into using our X train and Y train. And 
we'll run our prediction using the train and we'll run our prediction on the x test so all of our prediction is run on x train and x test and now it's really about um, evaluating the model there are a couple of ways to do this we we'll look at method one method one is using residual analysis and um, what we are doing here is we're plotting the x which is the x uh, the y train here versus the y train predict minus y train the difference between our y train predict and also our y train uh, will be the error okay and then we're plotting again the actual test versus test predicts versus the test itself so basically this is the training data and this is the uh, test data and look at our model and compare how it performed in sample and out of sample and the rest is just really setting uh, the label legend um, case let's plot this out now if you have a uh, a normal model uh, the model that whereby your um, your model explain all the variability of your data then it will actually normally will not have outliers that looks like this in this example we do have outliers here there seems to be quite a um, gathering here and also gathering here as well so there are some data that is um, not explained by our model so if you look at the residual analysis it, it there are certain form of structure although it doesn't look very linear but definitely there are some sort of structure in there a second way of uh, evaluating your the performance of your model is to make use of mean square error sometimes root mean square error basically taking the mean square error and uh, take a square root of it um, again the psyche limb provide a matrix whereby you can import the mean square error and run the actual mean square error itself and what you can see here is that uh, the model performed better uh, in sample than out of the uh, than out sample. So in sample, the error is 36.5. Uh, out of sample is 46. So the error actually has gone up. Now, if we look at another method of evaluating the performance of your model, it's called coefficient of determination. Now, mean square error is basically the prediction less the actual value itself. And then take the square of all of them and then averaging it. Now, the average value of the sums of square error cost function, it, this is useful for comparing different regression models and is really good for fine tuning your model via grid search or cross um, validation. Now, coefficient of determination is really one minus the sum of square of error divided by the total sum of squares right so let's just run this again we can import the r square calculation directly from psychic learn and if we look at in sample uh, it's 0.57 the higher the number the better it is and when you look at our sample it's only 0.43 now r square has a value of between zero and one so one meaning a perfect explanation. Zero means perfectly unable to explain anything. And 0.57 and 0.43 in sample and out sample, it clearly shows that the model uh, explained, uh, explained in sample data well, but it doesn't seem to be, um, it doesn't seem to do too well out of sample. Okay, now, it's always good to actually have a reference point. Um, what I mean by reference point is that what we have done so far is applying these three matrix, um, performance evaluation matrix on the empirical data and look at the residual. The only issue is that if you haven't seen this before, you don't know what to look out for. Hence, it's always good to actually compare it against a near perfect model and, um, and learn from it. So what I'm going to show you is that uh, we're going to show you an old friend. Okay, this old friend you've seen before. Um, it's in the earlier model that we uh, attempted on, uh, which is the IRIST 
uh, data sets. Technically, we didn't do this. This is not really the Iris data sets, but I did the actual uh, so-called illustration of it within the uh, Iris notebook, Jupyter notebook. So if you look into it or dig out the notebook and you will be able to see that uh, I've illustrated this method, basically generating uh, a number, calculate the um, dependent variable and then plot it out and run a simple linear regression on it. The only slight difference here is that instead of 100 uh, random numbers we generated in the actual um, psychic learn notebook, here we're actually generating a thousand. Okay, so just basically have more uh, data. Um, again, we run the train test split. The slight variation here is that I'm going to keep 70% to train our model because we have more data now and keeping 30% um, as our test set. Again, the usual is X train, X test, Y train, Y test. We're setting the random state equal to zero so that when you run this, you're going to have the same output or same result. All right, the same process here uh, being um, selecting a model uh, and actually fitting the model and finally uh, run our prediction. So in the prediction in the training and also prediction in the test. Okay, now that we've done that, uh, let's uh, plot the residual analysis. I didn't actually type that out here. So residual analysis. Okay, so when you plot that out, and uh, what do you actually observe here? Okay, so having plot that, um, you can see that there is an overlap of both the training as well as the test data. There are some pretty interesting observations that you can see here. The orange star is the test data and the blue star is the training data. Um, they are pretty consistent, right? You can see that uh, they are actually pretty much in the same range and the range is between plus 3 and minus 3. Now contrast that to the earlier um, model that we looked at. Uh, what do you see? The actual range is substantially larger, plus 15 and all the way down to minus 25. And uh, therein lies the difference. And the, in terms of behavior, um, the blue and the orange seems to be very similar. Although when you're looking at the test data, it does actually have a little bit more outlier and the blue dot doesn't seem to um, have such a extreme uh, data observation that is uh, or outlier. So this is actually a, a healthy and, um, and one that near perfect model should look like. Of course, if it's near completely perfect, then you basically have have it in, uh, in, in on one line. But don't forget that the actual uh, limit of the residuals that we use is actually uh, quite uh, narrow. Okay, um, because this is range of three to minus three, and whereas this is substantially larger between minus twenty five and fifteen. And if we set it to the same scale, um, then you will see that it is substantially squashed. Just to illustrate the point, I added this line here, uh, setting the limit of the y-axis from fifteen to minus twenty five. And you notice that it is actually substantially, um, the, the, the variability is actually substantially more uh, narrow when you actually compare to this same range of 15 to uh, minus 25. Okay, moving on from that, uh, we'll look at the mean square error. So calculating that, you can see that it's 1.03 in sample and 1.03 outside of the sample is slightly higher in the test, uh, but they are pretty actually small. It's only one point something. So looking at the mean square error uh, within the actual um, uh, earlier model is 36 and 46. And you can clearly see that there is actually a substantial difference in terms of the scale is literally 40 times, uh, 40 times difference. And the final one is the coefficient of determination. 
and uh, if you look at this you can clearly see the difference is uh, very stark here 98 percent variability is explained in sample and again 98 percent is explained outside of sample compared to the earlier model where you have only 57 is explained in sample data is explained and once it's outside of the sample of 43 it is not uh, only 43 is explained so the the difference is really quite stuck okay so uh, before we move on to summarize and end this uh, training i like you to try out the uh, model the earlier model okay so the earlier model being this one here okay now in the so-called performance evaluation let me just go over there what we did use is the LSTAT okay there's only one variable out of uh, the 14 potential variable okay so what happened if you actually try all of them I'd like you to actually try that exercise um, pause the video and try the exercise and see what kind of value uh, are you able to obtain and uh, don't pick at my answer I already put my answer there um, it's uh, when you come back I will explain to you where I hit the answer in uh, in the actual code itself so for now um, let's pause and go and try this out and when you come back I'll review my answer to you Welcome back. All right, I'm gonna walk through with you my example. Um, then the difference here is really this is where the hidden. I just basically put a hash there and comment that out. So I'm gonna run all of these, and if you look at the residual analysis, um, it's slightly better, not that much better, uh, although the, the, it's it's slightly less than 20, uh, 15 and twenty five. Uh, they asked you some actual. Uh, variability that's not explained so let's run the mean square error notice that there's actually quite a substantial drop down to 19 and 33 now compared to 30 um, and 46 before so remember 57 43 if i run that now is 77 and 58 so clearly there are still some uh, numbers that's not explained or some variability that's not explained when we run a linear regression with uh, all of the input variables um, so there's obviously some variability that is not explained in our data nevertheless however it's still an improvement from uh, the using single feature as the explanatory variable so let's just wrap up so far what we have explained in this video is about performance evaluation and the matrices that you use to evaluate performance there are of course others that yet to be covered uh, such as mean absolute error there are a few ways to improve uh, your model construction uh, we use the train test split uh, you can also use a stratified shuffle split meaning is shuffle the actual data rather than uh, having a strict cut at the 80% or the 70% mark. You can also perform some feature engineering to improve your model, uh, combining features, adding, dividing, or designing derivative features. Um, we haven't done any data preparation like uh, missing values, uh, what do we do with them, uh, outliers, what do we do that with them and how to treat them. Uh, we didn't actually deal with categorical features, um, yes, we do have binary, but there's no categorical features, so I didn't show you that. Uh, we haven't done any perf tra data transformation or feature scaling. Uh, we're going to show you in the psychic learn pipeline. Again, we didn't do any fine tuning such as grid search and randomized search. And the final one is the ensemble methods, uh, which we will look at um, in future video. So for now, I hope you have found this uh, tutorial useful. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.